Hi everyone, and welcome back to another VoiceFlow tutorial video. Today we'll be tackling three different logic blocks or steps, starting first with the capture block, which allows us to capture a piece of information from what the user says and store it in a variable. Second, we'll learn about the random block, which allows us to send the user down a random conversational path. And finally, we'll go over the exit block, which allows the user to exit the conversation and close the voice experience they are in. Okay, let's get started. So here we are back on the VoiceFlow canvas, and you can see that I have a VoiceFlow Pizza sample project here. And what this project is going to do is welcome the user to VoiceFlow Pizza with a speak step, which is going to prompt them to answer the question, what is your first name? From there, we want to use a capture step, which we're going to create later, to actually capture their first name. This will then let us greet them back using their first name now that we have it saved. And then finally, we'll ask them if they want to order a random pizza. If they do, we're going to send them down a random path, and they're going to either get a cheese pizza or a pepperoni pizza. Great, so let's hop into the first part of this project, which is where we're going to add our capture step. So I'm going to go into our step menu here and pull out a capture step. And I'll put that right there as we're prompting the user with the question, what is their first name? So that's where we want to put it. And you'll see within our editor here on the right, we have two different input types. We have an input for our slot type, where we want to put in the type of data that we're looking for. And it's important to note that if you're not familiar with slots, it's best to check out episodes 5 and 6 within our Intro to VoiceFlow tutorial playlist as we go over slots in detail. And this will help you immensely when it comes to understanding how to set up and effectively use the capture block. So back to our project now, and we can put in our slot type, which is first name. And there happens to be a predefined built-in Amazon slot type called US first name. So we'll use that. And now we want to choose which variable we are capturing the data to for first name. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and create a new variable called name. And there we go. Now in our speak step, we want to go in and say, nice to meet you. And we're going to turn the word name into a variable. So we're going to say, nice to meet you. And then we're going to add a variable for name. So there it is there. So now this should work. We are welcoming the user to our project where we're asking what is their first name. We are capturing their first name using the US first name slot type and saving it into the name variable. And then we are greeting the user back by the first name they gave us. So now you might be asking yourself, well, why is this different than a choice step? I feel like we could do the same thing here. And well, you'd be right. The choice step allows you to have a lot more complexity when you're capturing user data. So let me give an example here. If I go back to our step menu and I pull out a choice step here, we will go ahead and recreate the same scenario using a choice step. So first we need to go in and create an intent for capture name. So let's create this. And then we want to put in our utterances. And so you might be thinking, well, what if I just put in a single slot like you would in a capture step? And the answer is yes, you can do that. So let's add something like username. So now I have user underscore name as the slot and I'll choose the US first name as the slot type and I'll hit create slot. And so at this point, the choice block and the capture block look to be doing the same thing. And for the most part, they are. However, these blocks are different in terms of what they are capable of doing. And so there are certain scenarios when it is more beneficial to use the choice step over the capture step and vice versa. Now, voice assistants often have a really hard time actually determining what intent you're going for if you only have a slot. So to actually make your project work a lot smoother and be more accurate when deciphering the user's response, you would be better off going with a choice step. Generally, when using a choice step, you want to add in a full utterance. So you want to have something like, my name is, and then we'll add in username, We'll add name is username, and finally, I am username. And so now, these three sample utterances are going to give the assistant a lot more information to work with in order to identify what the username slot is, based on how the user's response stacks up to the utterances listed here. Now, what the capture step does really well is it does not need an intent. In fact, all you need to put in is the slot type that you're looking for. But the drawback here is that you can only capture one piece of data and it's going to capture the entire utterance of what the user said. 
So if you're looking for a very complex utterance, such as you want to capture the name and city from the user, and so capturing two different slots, your utterance might be, my name is Mark and I live in Seattle. If this is the case, you'd likely want to use a choice step. But on the other hand, if you're only looking to capture someone's first name, that's where we could use a capture step, since we only needed to capture one piece of info. We don't need to worry about putting in utterances, and we can just put in the slot type. Great. So now let's test this and see how it works. So now let's head to the prototype tab, and let's start the test. Welcome to VoiceFlow Pizza. What is your first name? So I'm going to put in just Mark, as we are only asking for the user's first name. Nice to meet you, Mark. Are you ready to order a random pizza? Great. So we can see our capture step is working. We successfully captured the US first name slot, put that into the name variable, and then from there we welcomed the user by their name, and now we are prompting them again. So just to recap the capture step here, it makes it easy to capture a single piece of information from the user, and it is different than the choice step because the choice step runs off the intent system where you have to put in a couple of different sample utterances or variations of how the user might respond. In order for the choice step to work at its best, it needs this additional information and context so it can parse through a user's response to find the exact slot type you're looking for. In comparison, the capture step only needs to know the slot type that you're looking for and which variable you're capturing it to. However, the drawback here is that it cannot parse through the user's response as it can only pick up one piece of information. And so it has to store the entire user response inside a variable. So now that we've covered the capture step, let's move on to the random step. Great, so now we've captured the user's first name, we've greeted them by name, and now we're asking them, are you ready to order a random pizza? I've already put in a choice step here, which has the yes intent, and from here, we'll connect this to a random step, where we are going to randomly send the user to either the cheese pizza option or the pepperoni pizza option. So let's go over to our step menu in the logic dropdown and pull out a random step. So here we have the random step, and you'll see it looks a little bit like the choice step in that it has multiple different paths. And so we can actually go ahead and add different paths, and you'll see that the actual block will expand. And of course we can also remove paths. And so in this case we only need two different paths because we only have two options, cheese and pepperoni. But again, you could go ahead and add and remove as many different paths as you'd like. The random step is fairly easy to understand once it is linked up. So let's link this, and we'll rename it to randomizer. So we'll give it a fun name, and we'll change the block color here to purple. And now we're going to link both of these paths just like that. And how this works is that when the randomizer step is activated, it's going to randomly send the user down either path 1 or path 2. It's very important that all of your paths are linked up. Otherwise, this could stop your project if the user lands on a path that doesn't have a link. Okay, getting back to our random step, we can jump inside the editor and we have an option that says no duplicates. And what this means is that if we were to hit the same random step more than once, it will avoid going down the same path twice, and it will continue to cycle through and do each unique path every time the random step is initiated until each path has been done once. After this happens, the random step resets, and the same thing happens all over again. So when this option is checked, your random step may take the user down path 1, then 2, then 3, it might decide to do path 3, then 2, then 1, but it will not do any path twice in the same cycle unless all of the available paths have been activated once. This is just a quick tip for you to keep in mind, and since we only have two paths here in our project and we're not really concerned about going down duplicate paths, we're going to go ahead and turn that off. Okay, awesome. So now let's go and test out our randomizer to see how it works. So let's go up to the prototype tab, and we'll hit start test. Welcome to VoiceFlow Pizza. What is your first name? I'm going to say Mark. Nice to meet you, Mark. Are you ready to order a random pizza? I'll say yes. Cheese pizza coming up. 
And there we go. And you'll see on our debug mode here, it says going down random path. So our random step was initiated and it gave us the cheese path during this test. Now, if I tried this again, I would have the same chance of getting cheese again as I would pepperoni because of course we disabled the no duplicates option. And so you get the point, the random step randomly selects a path for the user. It's really fun to use and it allows you to create more personalized, spontaneous conversations. Great. Now let's learn about the exit step. Great. So this project is looking pretty good. However, we haven't yet touched our commands. And so this is a good time to learn about the exit step. So how the exit step works is that anytime it's activated, it automatically ends the conversation no matter what flow you're in. And that's the important part because normally projects automatically end once there are no connected steps. So as an example in our home flow here, which is the root flow of our project, once this speak step has been activated here saying cheese pizza is coming up, the conversation is going to end as it is the last step in the highest flow we have. Where the exit step comes in handy is when you're trying to end a conversation in a subflow or command. So as an example, if we go into our help command over here, you'll see that we are asking the user, you said help, do you want to continue? If the user says no, this allows us to force quit the experience and actually close the conversation. The reason this is relevant is normally, even if the user said no, because this is a command, it's a subflow. And so the conversation won't end even if it's the last step and it's not linking to anything. Instead, it's going to go back to the home flow. And so in this example, having an exit step here allows the user to end the conversation wherever they are in the project. Now let's show how this works in action. So let's go back to our home flow. And then we'll hop into the prototype tab. Welcome to Voice Flow Pizza. What is your first name? I'm going to go ahead and just say Mark here. Nice to meet you, Mark. Are you ready to order a random pizza? So now we're listening for an intent with our choice step here. And this is where I can go ahead and activate my help intent. So I'll say help. You said help. Do you want to continue? And so if I said yes, this is going to bring me back to the project. Nice to meet you, Mark. Are you ready to order a random pizza? But now if we say help again. You said help. Do you want to continue? And now I'm going to say no. And there we go. The session ended as we went ahead and hit the exit step. And that brought us back to our home flow. And so that is the most useful use case for the exit step is when you're in a subflow or a command and it allows you to create a certain point in time where you might want to end the conversation. Again, you don't always have to do this to end a conversation because on the home flow, if there is a step that has no connecting paths, it will end the project. But within a subflow, you're always going to waterfall back up to the previous subflow and so on and so forth until you hit the home flow. And so if you don't want this to happen and you want the project to end immediately within a subflow, that's where you should use an exit step. Great. So to recap today, we learned about the capture step, which allows us to capture a specific piece of information from the user and store it in a variable. We then learned about the random step, which allows us to create more personalized conversations that are spontaneous by sending the user down a random path. And of course we learned about the exit step, which allows us to end a conversation in whatever state or flow it is in right then and there. These are very useful tools to create more personalized conversations for your users. Fantastic. That's all we have for this one. We'll see you in the next VoiceFlow tutorial.